Hi everyone, this is Dr. Leila Hussain, your camera rector at St. Andrews University. I want to thank TEDx St. Andrews for inviting me today to really come and talk about uh, a subject that's very close to home for me. And the subject that I actually picked, it's black women in leadership roles, uh, which is very uh, important for this particular audience today because I am the first black woman to be holding this position at St. Andrews. But first of all, let me take you a little bit back. I think it's important to understand historically why black women have always struggled in such spaces. And if we go back to slavery, colonialism, black women were never even seen as human beings. Uh, we experience misogyny, patriarchy, racism, all within the same spaces at all times. So you are carrying that at all times as a black woman. And it's really important to recognize that. However, we are now in a position where we can tell these stories. And my story has been quite important in this. And, but also it's, uh, it's been really interesting to see the reaction even when I got this role at St. Andrews. You know, everybody was very excited. However, it's a very hopeful position. And I tell you why this was very hopeful. Let's be very honest. St. Andrews is very white. It's a white bubble. It's a very close white bubble. It's a very privileged white bubble. I just came in and pinched a little bit of that bubble. That's really all I've done so far. Uh, the fact that after 607 years, a black woman has been elected. But what makes this very special? Because it's very white, the students are white who picked a black woman. That gives me a lot of hope. And I think we need to recognize that. Is it an easy position to hold? Of course it isn't, because now there's, there will be a, a, there, there's a cultural shift that's happening. Um, and I think it's important to remember our experiences have always been different to white women, obviously to white men. Uh, let me take you back a little bit more again. What is it like to be a black woman in leadership role? Uh, my experiences have been a lot of microaggression, I cannot express my feelings with a loud uh, voice because I'm sure if you're a black person watching this, especially for a black woman watching this, we have been called aggressive, we have been called angry, where a woman, a white woman or a white man, are usually referred to in that situation as passionate, as those who are, are, are very powerful. So the connotation is always different. So we need to constantly watch. And I'll give an example. I don't know if many of you have been following the recent case of uh, Sharon Osborne and Cheryl Underwood, who is a black female comedian. I would really encourage you all to go and watch that clip because what you will see is exactly what I'm constantly talking about, how black women are treated differently. Sharon Osborne is asking a black woman to educate her on racism. It's not up to me to teach white people on racism. Racism was created by white people, so white people should be in a position to educate themselves. But it was the tone uh, Sharon took with her that was really disturbing. But what Cheryl had to do through the whole time is what black women, including myself, have to do many, many times. It's keep calm, composed, because if we showed, if Cheryl um, did what Sharon has done, the, the outrage would have been much different. And I think it's very important to really keep an eye on that. This is only few, this is just a week ago this has happened. So when I say black women in leadership or in particular roles, they are, even though they're in powerful position, but they're still expected to tone things down. You're not allowed to show your anger or, or frustration. And what, what really frustrates me most of the time, actually, as a black woman, I mean, now I own my anger. I have every right to be angry, actually. If I'm receiving racism the moment I leave my house and I'm uh, exposed to misogynistic behaviors and a patriarchal system is trying to control me at all times, I have every right to be really mad right now. So I think if you're a black woman watching this, you have every right to be pissed off. There's a reason why you should be pissed off. And our white allies, our friends, should be creating a safe space for us to be angry and acknowledge there's a reason why we're angry. So we're not just leaders. We are constantly have to maintain our emotions. So when I'm uh, 
demanding or leading. It's, it's out of my passion on what the changes I want to make because I'm a change maker. So I am a black woman who's powerful and owning it. However, we still don't feel safe. Maybe if I bring it back to St. Andrews, I'm the first black woman to hold this position. My rector's assessor is the first black woman to be holding this position. Um, unfortunately, this is a journey we are both taking together. And Stella and I have check-ins to see how we get in on. It's not, it's not easy. Um, there's always this sense we need to make sure we're not seen as aggressive black women. Uh, but I think also what needs to happen for us is to ensure that we do have a safe space. Uh, unfortunately, I've had experiences where I've held jobs, but when white women or white men held that job, there wasn't a lot of suspicious around them. But when I held that position, there was always suspicion. And, and, it's, and it's quite interesting. I've been called many things. I've been called that I'm too ambitious. I want too much. You know, I'm too passionate or too angry or I care too much. I've been told a few times. Um, actually, I see that as a positive thing. I'm very ambitious. I'm not going to apologize for that at all. I am angry about lots of things for very good reasons. Uh, just go on my, uh, <laughs> just follow my social media friends and you'll see all the racist comments I get on a daily basis. So there's a reason why I'm angry. So it's really important to recognize black women holding leadership roles are dealing with the whole different struggles and we do not compare us to other people because it's a whole different struggle. So I think it's important to really, I really want you guys to really understand my role currently in many positions, but also Stella, who now holds the position, it comes with a different type of uh, 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 struggle. And that's just based on our skin color. But I would like to commend the university for also in trying, you know, trying to ensure and ensuring that we are kept safe and very, very much open to all our amazing and great ideas that we want to implement. So again, just proves change is coming. Uh, but that happens with creating safe spaces. We will be having uncomfortable conversations. It's really important. I really genuinely, in my campaign, for me, this, this was very important to encourage. We, we won't learn unless we have these uncomfortable conversations. And I think we owe it to all of us. Um, but I think check, check on the strong black woman around you because there's a reason why she's strong. She had to struggle a lot in her life. She had to endure a lot in her life. Just imagine the moment you walk out of your house, you have to deal with racism, misogyny, and a patriarchal system that wants to control all of you. So it's important to, to remember that. So I think it's important now to step into the space of then how do we support black women in leadership roles? And this comes in different uh, layers. There's the, 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 the support that institutions need to ensure uh, it's there for black women, but also individually. So institutions, one, they need to recognize that there is a problem because you cannot address a problem without actually admitting there is a problem. And by doing that, you will be, you will be forced to create a, a, a space where you now have to have these very uncomfortable conversations. So admitting that you are a racist institute, you know, and you might not want to say you're racist, but I think the undertone is definitely there. I think as important institutions really recognize that by ensuring you actively go and look for people of color, women of color. I've heard over and over again, people saying, but we don't see them. We don't, uh, 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 they don't apply for these positions. No, go and actively and look, look for them. Use your networks to go and look for them. I think it's really important, especially if you're a very powerful institution, it's your duty to actually go and do that. These people, these women exist. They absolutely do exist. So that's institution. Uh, on an individual level, I think it's important uh, to one yet again, recognize the biases you hold. We all have biases. That's all of us. That No one's exempt from this. We all hold biases based on the environment that we grew up in, uh, institutions that we grew up in, we do hold those biases. It's very important as an individual to recognize. And I do this with myself. I hold those biases. I think it's important to recognize that. Educate yourself. 
please do not expect a black person to educate you on racism. You have the resources. You can go on, on, on World Wide Web and find all that information. So it's not for us black women to teach you on racism. So it's important you educate yourself. But again, ask the question. Maybe what you could do uh, to for black women, if you have a question, there, there is a way of asking. I think it's important. Please don't come and touch my hair. Please stop touching black women's hair. This has happened to me even in a leadership role. People say, oh, let me see your hair. Like, you know, I've never seen a white woman's hair be touched uh, ever. Uh, I think, but those are the kind of things I'm really talking about. It's so important that you don't treat me any different than anyone else. Because unfortunately, till now, as a black woman, I promise you, any spaces I walked into, there, there's always been a different treatment. So we are all in a position to make that change individually and through institutions. So it's important to remember black women are thriving, they are leading, and I'm currently in the African continent. And let me tell you, you can go and Google this. I think the Afri African continent has more female presidents than any other continent in the world. And I think that has to be recognized. There's a reason for that. So black women, I hate to say, we're not going anywhere. I think it's recognizing as an institution, look at yourself. Have we had a black leadership? Have we had a black woman holding this role? Have we had uh, 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 black females holding a position of decision-making or influencing? Just ask yourself that question. So we, they're there. I mean, during the Black Lives Matter this summer, um, I co-founded with my uh, uh, friend Fatima Haji, co-founded a safe space for black women. In this space, we have women from the world of tech, entrepreneurs, you know, women who are doctors to uh, teachers, health professionals. They exist. And it's really heartbreaking when you hear that they don't, they're not even allowed in certain spaces. So we're there, we exist. I want to summarize this conversation by giving you hope. And me being in your space at St. Andrews, it is hope. That's the hope. It took, it took over 600 years, but the hope, it, there is hope. Uh, your assessor is also your hope. And I really want you to really reflect on that. So I will challenge you all. How will you support these two black women who are now holding this position?